Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Josh Choi. Josh is the Director of Business Development at Korea Startup Forum, the biggest startup membership organization in Korea with more than 1,400 startup members. Its current focus is to support and consult with startups for their recovery and growth through the pandemic. Prior to that, he was notably Chief Communications Officer at Icon Loop, which is Korea's number one blockchain startup, and Program Lead of Smart ABC, which stands for AI, Banking and Cities, at the International Telecommunication Union, where he worked for nine years. Okay, Josh, you know about our three plus one formats. You get three questions and one soapbox moment. So let me start with question one. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telecommunications operators? And I would add specifically with the Korean experience of having a form of sending party pays um, legislation introduced a couple of years ago. Well, thank you very much for uh, introduction, Caroline. So I'm very, very pleased to be here to uh, share about some stories on that issues, especially in South Korean context. Well, as we have witnessed for the last few years, you know, the consumption of uh, especially multimedia content on the internet, such as like video games, you know, also AR and you know, VR content has grown up really exponentially, right? So the current issue surrounding this trend is so basically, you know, the content providers should pay for the traffic that they generate because the network is built by the telcos and the content provides uh, make a lot of money through delivering their content on the network that telcos are building. So some people argue that, you know, just like we pay the you know toll fee when we drive on the uh, highway and that the content providers must pay for the uh, those traffic so that the telcos can invest more on more on you know building, you know, maintaining, improving the network infrastructure. It might you know sound fair. Uh, you make a large volume of traffic. Okay, so be responsible for it. However, you know, well, considering all this, you know, the, the the environment and the context here, you know, this argument sometimes hides the truth. Okay, so uh, I don't want to uh, make a mistake of generalization, but as you suggested, just explaining only in the context of South Korean uh, market. Well, actually, the, the major Korean telcos, you know, SK Telecom and Korea Telecom and LG U Plus, well, they haven't actually invested much in the network infrastructure. So in 2019, well, these three major big telcos in Korea announced that they launched uh, you know, five, uh, 5G services for the first time in the world. And the number of subscribers for 5G services is uh, nearly, you know, 24 million, which is almost half of the total mil, uh, total population in South Korea. So the total sum of these, you know, three major companies' you know, operational profits surpassed the 10 billion US dollars in previous quarter of this year. However, actually, their spending on the network infrastructure has decreased compared to the same quarter of the last year. So one of the main reasons is that well, the, those telcos have been, you know, threatened and facing challenges in, in expanding their business, right? So the market is saturated and that there's no more room to grow. So therefore, you know, they have tried the new businesses and you know, launched additional services, which is normally packed together with their subscription, uh, subscription services. So uh, they you know, try to make you know, uh, more profit from their different area, which are mostly, unfortunately, well, not very successful so far. So they spend more money on these areas rather than improving the quality of their core products, which is basically net. So this is why many people are kind of suspicious that you know that you know that um, you know that those telcos will uh, invest more on you know in, uh, network infrastructure. So well, um, in a nutshell, yes, it is for sure that the internet traffic will never stop growing in an exponential way, and the more and more users are actually really enjoying you know, consuming the, uh, the, the videos and the games and whatever. So the network infrastructure definitely you know, must be able to handle this. So we need more investment here, but it's also an area that we cannot just believe in, um, I would believe, you know, just free, free market because the telecom network uh, infrastructure is not just um, you know, industry, but also is a utility like you know, water and electricity. 
So uh, this is why you know, some people argue that you know, Commons has to intervene and you know, come up with the various ways to support and help open up the new opportunities for uh, telcos. So I think this is a really over context that I can interpret and in this context about your question about the, uh, the, the consumption of the multimedia content and the telcos. Thank you, Josh. It's, it's, it's actually um, interesting to see that you're telling me there's more money coming into the telcos in, in South Korea, but it's just not going towards infrastructure. It's going to other things, right. uh, services. Yeah. And, and sad to hear, actually, that they're not very successful from what you tell me. Unfortunately, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, sometimes if, if, you're good, if you're a good engineer, it doesn't necessarily make you a good content provider, let's put it that way, and vice versa, um, yeah. in all honesty. Um, so let me switch maybe then, because, you know, you, you, you've already hinted upon it. Um, let me switch to the next question, which is, what are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telcos? Mm. Yeah, that's very important, also very interesting question. So, uh, yeah, I try to be really honest and frank. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> uh, more than you know, a half of the uh, the global internet traffic comes from you know six major big techs. You know, according to a recent study I just read from newspaper. The other day, and you know, Google and Facebook and Netflix and Microsoft and Apple and Amazon, they generate nearly 60% of the global internet traffic. This is huge. So, yes, it is correct that big techs are making you know huge volume of data and a huge volume of traffic. However, I think we would meet really distorted and unfair market environment if we are too much focused on the you know the, the logical framework of traffic-oriented payment issues that you know, telcos are building because firstly, you know, the government can be tempted to you know, set up a new legislation, you know, making content providers payment mandatory in the name of preventing them from, you know, free riding. But actually this is really happening in South Korea. So a number of bills have been introduced in the Congress to require local, you know, foreign content providers to pay the, um, the fee for the network based on the volume of the traffic they generate. So, um, but the issue is that, um, you know, the, this is, I think, you know, it's really totally infringing the freedom of making contracts, which is a really essential you know, basic legal right of you know, juristic persons. You know, telcos and content providers, of course, they can sign a contract to require for like sharing the cost for the uh, internet traffic. I think, yes, it's up to them, you know, but the con that contract should be made up on, you know, mutual contract, not by the, you know, government legislation. So, and also it should be also about the access to the internet, not about the traffic volume, which is, I believe, completely against the original design of the internet. Right. So this, you know, sender pays rule that these these telcos are want to establish is uh, completely opposite side of the uh, the original, you know, design of the internet. Right. So I believe. The government should uh, focus more on policy to support the growth of telcos rather than, you know, force legislation and intervene in the expansion. And also, they should in, uh, intervene more in the expansion of the network, not just leaving them in, in a just free market uh, competition. So this is one thing. And I think, secondly, you know, more and more, you know, small, uh, medium-sized content providers, startups will die and disappear, I believe. And eventually only big tax and the telcos will survive. So that market will be really dominated by you know, just a few players. So consequently, the, all these harms can be placed on you know, users' shoulders. So in South Korea, uh, there are quite a few small, medium-sized content providers who have attracted many, many users by their innovative you know, and creative you know, content and services. But the, the, this emergence of these startups has really boosted innovations and created really has competition in the market. However, as telcos require them to pay the fee based on the traffic they generate, they're really struggling to survive. For example, one of the um, most popular video platform in Korea, which is actually a startup, and their, um, their yearly revenue is just one fortieth of the biggest player neighbor. However, they pay the fee, which is equivalent to one 
fifth of the fee never paid. This is really huge difference. So telcos argued that you know they seek fair contribution by asking big techs to be responsible for the traffic, but it actually may create a kind of unfair monopolized historical market if we focus on telecom traffic volume. So this is the second thing I believe. And third, the core issue that I think you know we have to tackle is actually the shortage and the low quality of the network itself. So the sender pace rule actually sees content provider as a you know, main driver uh, to generate you know, too much traffic. But this perspective, I believe, might distort the real picture that we have to see. So basically, you know, traffic growth is a really essential that the internet relies on. You know, so high quality content is created, and more and more people definitely will use the internet. And then telcos can generate revenue based on the growth model, this growth model, right? But video streaming, you know, metaverse, and much, you know, virtual reality, you know, due to the evolution of all these technologies, actually network quality and capacity will get more and more importance, I believe. So the government has to find a way to incentivize the telcos to innovate the network infrastructure so that the network users also can be willing to use more and more, even pay more. So, but the problem here is that the quality of the network itself is really, you know, decreasing. So a lot of lot of people complain. So if the uh, the telcos can focus on their core product and then really increase the uh, the quality of the network, and people probably will be even willing to pay because they want to consume really, you know, a multimedia content. So I think this is the third thing. So uh, as I so uh, this is actually three major points that I can see as an inheritance in the dangers that you know this you know big tax and telcos can face. Thank you, Josh. So basically, um, risks to uh, contractual freedom um, using the right. wrong metric by focusing on uh, traffic uh, data rather than yeah. looking at the whole ecosystem and how it functions. Right. Um, a risk of consolidating the power of big tech. <laughs> Which is not exactly what any country is trying to achieve at the moment. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and stifling innovation within startups by making them also pay at the end of the day. It's not just big tech paying in, mm -hmm. in South Korea. Um, all of that is, yeah, it's it's not a good uh, perspective for Europe if we were to uh, join uh, South Korea's model. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, so let me now switch to a bit more. Um, technical uh, question, but it's because it's been raised in the discussions and maybe mm -hmm. you've had the same uh, arguments in, in South Korea, which is, do you think it's appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and, and telcos in infrastructure as suggested by some? So basically, um, you know, telecom operators say we invest so much uh, and content providers only invest so much in infrastructure. Do you think that's uh, an appropriate um, uh, comparison? Mm -hmm. um, well, as I mentioned earlier, you know, though the big techs uh, generate a really you know, large amount of internet traffic, uh, uh, I don't think it's appropriate to ask big techs to contribute to the network infrastructure, in my opinion. Uh, okay, for example, um, imagine that um, there's a famous restaurant and the more and more people have to drive to visit the restaurant so the traffic on the road to the restaurant is increasing and so but the, the road builder whoever it is whether it's the government or local government or whatever they normally don't ask the restaurant to pay uh, for the traffic so we normally try to uh, widen the road or construct an alternative rules to you know solve this kind of problem Right. Actually, well, okay. It might not be a really perfect analogy, but I believe, you know, it is for sure that all these, you know, debates on requiring, you know, content provider to contribute to the network is not aligned with the original principle and the spread of the internet I mentioned before. So, and also, uh, the the network quality itself is the primary element to make the internet traffic stable and fast. So the current network infrastructure is not actually capable of handling the skyrocketed in the volume of you know digital content anymore, right? So the internet users often complain that okay the, the, the internet gets so slow, especially when they are you know connected to a foreign network to use in the platforms outside of the country. So the speed and stability of the network 
are influenced not just by the traffic, but also more by the network quality itself. So therefore, you know, before questioning about the issue of uh, you know free ride of content provider, you know, that the, the sharing the same level of like you know, responsibility and contribution. I actually, well, I think we firstly have to ask first, you know, so whether telcos are really properly responsible for their role and duty in terms of the quality of network. So basically, you know, the telecommunication network is a business area for telcos, but at the same time, as I mentioned, it's a public infrastructure that should be interpreted as a basic utility for citizens. So actually, this is this is a really core cool pain point for the telcos because uh, it is very difficult for them to find the way to resolve uh, these issues in a balanced way because uh, if the government just leave the network in a free market competition environment and the players in this field obviously will obviously you know choose to minimize the cost and maximize the profit right therefore they would hesitate to spend on the network improvement actively rather they would be more focused on making profit so the quality is going down and then you know so therefore again as i mentioned that the government should you know intervene motivating telcos to take their core duty and responsibility so this is the first thing i think we have to do before discussing on how to involve big tax to the network management so of course, you know the uh, the content provider, yeah, especially big tags, you know, should take a certain level of responsibility for network management. However, it can't be the same as the one that telcos should take uh, due to the reasons I mentioned above. Thank you, Josh. So basically, um, it's all about creating, I think, the right incentives for telecom operators. Exactly. To feel yeah, right. like yeah, yeah. Investing in what they're good at at the end of the day, right. which is providing infrastructure, and and which is you know that infrastructure has been our lifeline during the pandemic right I think without that infrastructure all of us would not have been able to continue to work or you know kids going to school etc cetera, etc cetera. and 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 i i take your point about that incentive um oriented approach and that makes us reach actually maybe the moment where you want to share that incentive view with the two strong ladies in Brussels, uh, the soapbox <laughs> moment, as I call it. Uh, so you have one to two minutes to deliver a message uh, uh, to <laughs> put on screen Ursula von der Leyen, our president of the European Commission, <laughs> Roberta Metzola, president of the European Parliament. Um, I think you really, you, you're not talk, talking into thin air. I mean, you have the experience of what's happening in South Korea. So please yeah. share that experience with them. Right. Um, yeah, we uh, we understand that you know, the, especially big tax uh, should be also responsible in some way for the uh, network and infrastructure and also traffic because you know this is it's it, it's true that they are generating create a lot of you know traffic. However, uh, I recommend okay, instead of just uh, having just a really simple approach that okay, so you guys are. Uh, generate the traffic or so you have to pay for it uh, because if you look at the, the over ecosystem you know from you know one step further and you know, behind you can see a lot of lot of dynamics there as i mentioned before in the, all these three answers you know there are issues about you know fair competition also between big techs and also startups innovation and smes so this is also over you know, issues on the economics so i think um okay well we what well, the government can do something but Instead of uh, you know setting up the kind of a really legislation or uh, some kind of legal you know action, rather I try to think about what would be the really best role of the policymakers and the government to support you know telcos and incentivize them to focus more on the product and also try to uh, consider how we can really build the health ecosystem, considering all every elements that surrounded these issues. So. Yes, um, yeah, I, I strongly recommend that this also you know, this to make it uh, take into account, you know, the all you know diverse you know, different you know elements and perspective from especially uh, startups and SMEs who are really innovating this area. So otherwise, and again, you know, we will be just yeah depend on the uh, big tax and the big operators and then customers, and actually they will lose a lot of you know freedom to choose in you know, a different you know. Services and the content, and then of course, 
post market will be distorted. So, yeah, uh, this is first my really final statements that I would like to raise to the uh, um, decision makers in the EU. Um, thank you, Josh. I think I think um, the startup message is a strong one, and it's not. I mean, we have also a strong and growing community of startups in the EU. Right. Uh, the EU yeah. is actually based on small and medium enterprises. A lot of our, our right. growth comes from there, a lot of our innovation. Yes. So I think that's that's a point that I hope will resonate in, in the discussion. Just look at the bigger picture. It's not just about exactly. the big ones. <laughs> Don't yeah. forget the small ones that could be crushed in the middle. <laughs> yeah, because all these big companies also were started as a very small startup, right? So if you really wanted to keep innovation, so try to look at really innovative small medium sized group, and that there are a lot of, lot of interesting, you know, innovations. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience, Josh. Um, I'm I'm My pretty pleasure. sure it will be useful um, for for uh, for Brussels to 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 learn from that, and hopefully they will pick yeah, up right. uh, the you know the main findings uh, and and act accordingly. Have a great thank day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, thank uh, thank you for having me. Thank you very much.